<laughs> Day 7 of the advent of code. Today we are playing poker. So many memories from university when we were playing Texas Hold'em. But unfortunately, today we're actually playing camel poker, which takes away all of the fun from the game. In fact, we just have to score cards. But you know, we need to get those stars, so let's get it done. Okay, part one. So we have a list of hands and a bid associated with each hand. What we need to do is that we first need to rank those hands by their strength. So let's do that first as an example. So we have this hand here, which has a pair of three. So this is rank one. Then we have two hands here that are uh, that contain two pair. So we need to decide which one is stronger. And the way we do it is that we first compare the first two cards. Those are kings, they are the same, so nothing. Then we compare the second cards. And here we see that 10 is weaker than king. So we have rank two here and rank three here. So on and so forth. And then what we need to do is that we multiply the rank by the bid and we sum them all up together. So we will do one times six, seven, five, six, sorry, seven, six, five, two plus two times 220 plus three times 28, so on and so forth. Okay, let's see how we solve this part. So let's imagine for a second, we have a data structure that we can iterate in the order of strengths of the cards. If we can do that, and also let's imagine that we have a tally, which is a map that gives us the bid given a hand, then we can just iterate through this data structure and sum rank times bid. Well, turns out we can actually have the data structure. We can use a binary tree where we insert things in order by their strength. And how do we do that? So we have a type hand, which is just a string pretty much. And what we do here is that we implement an interface that is needed by the binary tree to insert elements in order. And the order is the strength of the card. Now, the trick we use here is that to calculate the strength, we calculate the type of the hand high card, one pair, two pairs, so on and so forth, and the strength of each individual card, and we combine them as a string, which means that, for example, for a, um, for a pair, for a high card, we would have one, for a pair, we would have two, and then we would start summing the strength of each individual card. So for example, if the first card was a three, we would do that. If the second card was a 10, we would do that so on and so forth for all five of the cards. And this would create a single string, which we can compare, as we do here, to have a global ordering of the hands. And we can also see each individual function. So the strength of the type of hand, we calculate this way. We first tally the cards in the hand, and then we create a slice which counts how many types, how many cards are the same. So we could end up, for example, with five cards being the same. We mark that as seven. Uh, four, car four of a kind, we call it six. Uh, full house, we call it five. Trees, we call it four, so on and so forth. And then we have a function for, uh, this is just an helper function to calculate the equality. And then we have a function here to calculate the strength of uh, all of the cards in the hand, where ace it counts as 14, king 13, uh, and between 2 and 9, we use that digit, actually. Part 2. OK, so now there's a bit of a twist. J cards are jokers, which means they count as the card that makes the, st the hand the strongest. But when it comes to their strength as an individual card, they are the lowest. So let's see how this is done. So if we go to part two, we are doing the exact same thing as before, 
The only difference is this line here, where we replace all of the j's with asterisks. And then, here, we count the jokers when we are checking the strength of the type of the hand. And when we find an asterisk, we don't add it to the tally, but we keep it on the side marked as a joker. And then when we get here, we actually make the hand the strongest we can by placing jokers in the right place. And the rest of the logic is pretty much the same. The other difference is where we are checking for the strength of individual cards. Here we have that an asterisk counts as one. And that's pretty much it. And that's day seven of the advent of code. Isn't it incredibly elegant when you manage to find the right data structure for the problem you're trying to solve? Well, let me know in the comments what you would have done differently, and I'll see you in the next one.